Welcome. Today I want to go over something that comes up very frequently and that is an abnormal hemoglobin or hematocrit on your routine lab values that are part of a complete blood count or CBC. When you hear about this you frequently will either hear the term that you are anemic and that basically is a way of saying that your hemoglobin or hematocrit is low or outside the normal range. Normal range is going to be 35-ish to about 50-ish for hematocrit and it's going to be about 11 to about 15 or 16 for your hemoglobin. And there's going to be some variation there based on age and sex and what's going on as far as the clinical picture. So if you have panic values then you need to know, hey, I need to go and get in touch with my provider if I haven't heard from them and figure out what do we need to do next. So if I was going to try to give you some guidelines to follow there, if your hemoglobin is less than about 7 or your hematocrit is less than about 21, you need to be sure that your provider's seen those labs and that you've got a plan for what you're going to do about it. If it's somewhere above that, closer to normal, then it really may or may not be something that's urgent. You certainly want to hear from your provider and know what the plan is, but it may not be something where you need to track them down urgently to make sure that they have seen those labs if you happen to be seeing them on a patient portal before you have heard from them. So again, we've said that hemoglobin and hematocrit are a way of quantifying the amount of red blood cells in your blood, and they really are used more than the red blood cell count itself. But when you hear these thrown around, you need to have some kind of working idea in your mind as to what potential problems could cause significant abnormalities. Well, the first one is bleeding. If you're losing blood in an abnormal way, either from abnormal menstrual cycles for ladies or through your GI tract, from some problem in the intestines or in the stomach, that can be an acutely concerning problem. And there may be additional labs and evaluation that needs to be done there to try to sort that out. And there may be referrals that need to be done if you haven't had an evaluation and it's age appropriate for either uh, gynecological problems or intestinal issues. So that aside, other common things would be deficiencies of iron, B12, or folate, or problems with the bone marrow not producing adequate amounts of blood, or even some situations where red blood cells are getting broken down abnormally. So if these are off, typically if there hasn't been some kind of a workup to figure out why they're off, then your provider is going to give you some guidance on what the next step there might be. And you may need to come back, discuss it, and have some additional lab work done. Now, if they're just a little bit outside the normal range, especially if there are historical records to look at and they're pretty similar to where they've been in the past, there may not be anything else that needs to be done other than a plan to recheck it at an appropriate interval and make sure that it's stable and that may just be your normal. So before we close this out, we need to also kind of run through what the symptoms that might be associated with a low hemoglobin or hematocrit might be. And they're basically what you might expect if you weren't getting enough oxygen to the tissues of your body, since that's what red blood cells do. So if you're feeling really short of breath, you're not tolerating exercise, you're feeling lightheaded, weak, dizzy, having chest pain, new weakness, numbness, or really profound fatigue, those symptoms may be related to your lab abnormality. And unfortunately, depending on the big picture of your health, it may be that you get symptoms with really minimal lab abnormalities where younger, otherwise healthier people might tolerate really significant lab abnormalities, especially if they've developed slowly over a long period of time. So that just gives you some idea what symptoms might be associated with a low hemoglobin or hematocrit or what would be termed as anemia. 
I hope that this has given you a little bit better understanding of how to think about hemoglobin and hematocrit and anemia. And it gives you a way to understand what your provider is doing or not doing if you have had some abnormal lab work. So I hope that this has been helpful. Please give us a thumbs up if you can. Click to subscribe, follow along, and I hope that you'll have a blessed day. Thanks. Bye.